coming. I'm Allison Brower, the Deputy Editorial Director of The Hollywood Reporter, and speaking here with you tonight with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon, stars and executive producers of Apple TV's original drama series, The Morning Show. <laughs> so I have to really start with the question of the moment, which is what is it like to see this show arrive and land finally when many of the stories that it was inspired by are back in the headlines in an even more dramatic way. I mean, it's odd. It's that uncanny, how, isn't it's it? It's uncanny how prescient it is, kind yes. of, in a way, because we didn't have, we had some information, but we mm. didn't have a lot of the information that it's going to unfold basically towards the end of the show is... Yeah, it's, odd, almost, it's as if how, someone how would, had is. been snuck in there. And yeah, but it's an amalgam of lots of different things. Yes. And, and unfortunately, gross negligence happens across many, many um, platforms and in many companies. So we had a lot of information. And, and the fact that Carrie yeah. Aaron, I have to say, was able to tap into it yeah. and not even, so not a part of that world mm -hmm. in any way. And she was able to create a world and create characters that were so layered and complicated and honest and messy. Um, it's, I, I even, we even said to her, like, are you psychic? I, I think she's psychic. <laughs> yeah, something. You two have probably done between you dozens if not hundreds of morning show appearances in your careers. And what did you take from your experience on those shows? And also did you research with some of the people who've worked in that arena to get these characters going? Well, yeah, well, I, I did. <laughs> um, I went to New York and GMA was kind enough to allow me in at five o'clock in the morning and um, walk through that world from five to seven, which is just an insane engine that revs up and then just explodes and it has it's done with such ease and grace by the end you actually think there's no way this is gonna actually happen. <laughs> this is not gonna end well and it just does. And it's also the lives of these people. They live the, the, the li these lives of vampires, mm -hmm. underground, under you know, in the night, and, mm -hmm. and constantly just <laughs> figuring out what they're going to tell all of us to hopefully we don't feel so crappy throughout <laughs> they, the day. They do, they do get to travel in New York when there's less traffic. That's the, Is that the benefit of getting up at 5 yeah. in the morning. But what was the most like, surprising thing that you learned about their world as you were researching this? It's never easy. Mm -hmm. Waking up at 3.30 never gets comfortable. Mm -hmm. They hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Reese, I, what I was struck by when I saw the first couple of episodes, you've played in the past a lot of real straight arrows who then kind of bust out in Big Little Lies, election, a lot of characters that are sort of in a box and then they act out a little bit. Here I feel like you're going the opposite direction. You're starting out as a real firebrand and then maybe they're gonna put you in a box. They're gonna try. <laughs> you wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's> <laughs> well, was there someone, I mean, is there someone that you drew on for this particular character? I mean, she comes in extremely hot. I definitely looked at people who have um, like no impulse control, <laughs> and uh, I think my character also just has this tendency to say things and then think about it later, um, as you'll see more as the the episodes go on. But it was really fun to play. That first scene was really hard with the cold. Oh, oh my gosh! That was one of your first, and you were it sick. Was my, it was my very f first scene, I think, yeah. and I had to memorize all those words, and I was like. What are these words? <laughs> and I think I made up like half of them, guys. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> and they were like triple the amount at the table read. Triple the amount at the table read. I remember yeah, yeah. during like, the table read, I was like, well, this is impossible. You're gonna need an earwig. There's no way. I, you had to actually <laughs> learn what all those, I didn't know what half of that meant. Yeah, I, I'm sure, pretty sure I made up half of them, honey. I, like, I, they're not real. You're gonna get busted on that, if that's the case. I think it's a geranium. In it. <laughs> and they made me go back in and they yard it. They were like, geranium's a flower. <laughs> yeah, but it's also coal. <laughs> there are a lot of scenes, Jen, where the camera really mm. lingers on your face. Your face in the mirror, your face as you're going through a lot of emotions. It's like a very intense close-up for more seconds than I think we're comfortable with, certainly from your old network TV world. How does it feel to be back in that, that TV lens after a while? Well, that's not what my TV lens used to look like. <laughs> I did not have that kind of slow, terrifying, slow pan in onto my, into my thoughts. 
Right. But, and it doesn't really feel different. I mean, to be honest, this is a schedule that is like our film schedule, but with more dialogue during the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And longer. And longer, yeah. yeah. It's like making, by the time we got to the end of it, it was like we'd made three movies. Yeah. So there's a key moment where Alex says, she's running on instinct and impulse. And yet, you know, she's externally showing a pretty controlled woman to the world. So how did you find that balance for her? Well, that's sort of one of the wonderful things about Alex's character is the layers that she is, that, that I was able to access, the, the, the human being, and then the woman that has to sort of pull it all together and say good morning to America. And that's, that's, you know, and then you have such a deeper appreciation for these anchors in the morning because, you know, life is happening and they're there for us. They're our mom and pa and waking up and we're, they're comfort food for us. They're our constant. It's comforting. And then they also have life happening, crumbling down around them or, yeah. you know, whatever. Or in the chair next be. to them. With yes, your, with exactly. Steve's character. And have to still sort of show up. I mean, yeah. it's, we, we experience it in a very small way, but there's something similar. There's something about being on live TV, too, that is terrifying. Terrifying. Because you can make so many mistakes. And I think back to your first, like one of your first questions yeah. about like, what is the thing that's so surprising? I think the way that they synthesize information and then like it's something terribly tragic and then transition to something oh. really upbeat is yeah. so weird. <laughs> the transition. Yeah, yeah, they're like, there was a train crash and also vitamin D. Yeah. <laughs> like, and Jen, I remember walking on set and Jen, like she just had her newscaster voice and I was like, I don't have my newscaster voice yet. I, really, I was like, how did you get that newscaster? She was like, well, I watched a lot of newscasters. I was like, shit. <laughs> I but but that's she what was, was so fun. You weren't supposed to really know. I wasn't really supposed to be very practiced or polished, but it was mesmerizing watching you do it. And then we had a really fun day where Diane Sawyer came to set and watched us do our newscaster voices. And we were talking about sunglasses and wake. It was like really kind of inane stuff. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, something, I don't know. No, but then we had to talk like about Turkmenistan or something <laughs> like that. And it was really confusing. And Diane was laughing. Yeah. Wasn't she? We, we were laughing. We were laughing. <laughs> we got the giggles. We got the giggles. So these characters are set up by the show, seemingly, and by the circumstances as competitors. Mm -hmm. But you think Alex and Bradley are not gonna play that game, or, or are they? Mm. But how did you, you know, both creatively during the development, but also in building your characters, talk about how you wanted to upend some of those entrenched ideas about women in the workplace, always being in competition, there's only room for one. How did that work into your development of your characters? Well, I think we felt strongly it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't supposed to be this acrimonious or adversarial relationship. Mm -hmm. It was actually just two women with different ideology kind of having to exist in the same space. Mm -hmm. um, but there aren't a lot of references for two women in, mm -hmm. in space, right? <laughs> two strong female leads in a piece of material. I mean, this is just sort of a, a new thing that's kind of happening now in, in dramatic premium television. And so... It was kind of the wild, wild west, whatever we wanted to make it. And that's, our relationship goes up and down. It goes up and down. They're finding, each, they're finding their way in, the, in this, new, this new normal, mm -hmm. um, which everybody is trying to, 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 to navigate. Um, and also realizing they're at a break, well, for my character, she's at a, a breaking point. She's kind of losing it a little bit, which also keeps escalating and escalating and then it's, it's, we're all just trying to f figure out this new playbook, mm -hmm. which is actually really fun because we could make, we, we were able to take creative license and sort of create a world that, you know, that's what's so fun about art yeah. in general. The scene at the end of the first episode where you two kind of throw down, or have the interview about oh, yeah. Bradley's experience with, at the coal mine was, mm -hmm. got a big reaction mm -hmm. in here and seeing you two finally kind of get to be head to head. How did that feel for you two with a, that first kind of, it's not a confrontation. No. Exactly, but it's so we're something. We're sparring, yeah. <clears throat> it was a really fun day. It was. It was, it was a long day. I think well, as we filmed it, the day we filmed it, I didn't realize it was gonna have that much impact because that's what people walk away with. So a lot of, of people who have seen it really kind of take that scene and go, that was so intense to, to watch them finally kind of come together. But. I just thought it was fun. <laughs> it was. It was really fun. You are on your phones a lot in this show. I was which... like, I am not. <laughs> 
Well, it's very true to life in media, and I'm sure it works fine for Apple product placement. But um, <laughs> speaking as you know, the Hollywood Reporter also had its moment in the second episode. So it did. Um, yeah, there's a news clip that comes up with from THR. But um, how do you act opposite a phone? Wait, are there like big scenes with the phone? I don't think so. You're in the hallway a lot on your phone. Yeah, that's up. life. Like, yes, right? isn't everybody on their phone? Probably more Alex than Bradley. But. Oh my lord. Uh, <laughs> I just draw from experience. <laughs> you know, you have to know these media people are on their yes. phone constantly. constantly. I mean, constantly. Twitter I, constantly. It's 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 crazy to watch that. Because you yeah. can't be a beat behind. You can't be a minute behind. And if you're a day late, you've lost the story. Mm -hmm. So much competitive scoop, like people scooping you, is a huge deal. I <laughs> I learned so much about how competitive the. Um, just between networks. Because you're talking oh, yeah. about a $500 million enterprise. And mm -hmm. if you drop in the ratings to second, you lose about $100 million in advertising. So that's what that whole ratings war was. Was that clear game. in the show? Was that clear? Yeah. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Because <laughs> you think it, it's a high stakes world. Mm -hmm. Reese, you're working with shows on multiple platforms. Hulu, Little Fires Everywhere, HBO Big Little Lies. How did you? decide that Apple was the place for this show? Well, Jen and I talked about it a lot. I mean, we went back and forth. Back and forth. We, took, we had like two or three days where we really spoke to everyone and, um, and really heard everything that everybody had to say. And Apple just came up with a proposal that was so, felt very cutting edge. It felt like the story. It felt mm -hmm. like they were going to allow us to really push creative boundaries. Yeah. And we were nervous. Yeah. Because we didn't know, they didn't know what they were doing. They literally said, we don't have offices. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, neither do we. This is kind of cool. It felt very wild, wild west, yeah. as you said. And that was exciting, because you know at the end of the day, Apple does things pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> and they were about quality, not necessarily quantity. Mm -hmm. um, and they have been awesome partners, because we have been allowed such creative freedom. Well, it's a big opportunity, but also a little bit of a risk to be the first big show or among the first big shows on this platform. Mm. Like, all eyes are going to be on these shows on November 1st. Mm -hmm. So are you, are you ready for that onslaught? Uh, well, well, now I am. <laughs> <laughs> scared the crap out of me. <laughs> no, um, it's going to be great. So you both were executive producers on this, obviously working on it together from the beginning. What was your... Um, did your involvement, was it sort of sustained through the whole process? Was it greater during development, continued during shooting? Every Same. day. Every, Every day. day. And Every day. if we were working on set and doing scenes, we'd be looking at writes, uh, drafts of a script, and then we'd go to a read-through, then we'd give notes, mm. then we'd be looking at an edit of one of the episodes, and it was just... Constant. It was constant. It was Fantastic. It though. was. It was so nice. <laughs> it was really fun to be, I mean, for us as we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so to be where we are and doing what we are allowed to do together yeah. right now in this day and age and this time, being a part of something that's starting for the you know from the ground up, we're pretty we were pretty excited about it. So and to have people listen to okay. us, you know, and be interested in our yeah. input. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. really extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And a female showrunner and a female director, at least That's on those right. first two episodes. So, that was great um, so, between Alex and Bradley, who would you want to get your morning news from? Alex. <laughs> well, it all depends on what what blows your hair back, I right? I, mean, <laughs> I love Alex. I love. Bradley. I have to say, when I was doing the scene where I have to talk to you about Cole, um, <laughs> and I was so nervous. So was I. Were you? Oh, yeah. But she had this outfit on, and then she has these like fake assistants, but they look kind of real, and they're bringing her water, and then she's like holding her glasses. And I was like, it was like it, the presence of it was very, it was just felt perfect. And I feel like this is, I, I can't imagine an actor more perfect for a role than Jennifer in this particular role, oh, right? Oh, There's something so perfect about it because. You, we know you and love you, but it's almost like this tiny peek at like, what is it really like to be known in the world, everywhere, the good, the bad, the, the, the pretty, the terrifying, all of it. So it's just, it just deepens the love for you, I God, think. I love you for that. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I gotta digest this for a second. <laughs> 
and Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> well, it is, it is fun to see you back, and I'm going to guess this is not unrelated, maybe, to the fact that you recently joined Instagram. And almost broke Instagram. <laughs> within days. It's not my fault. It's days, Courtney's fault. 16, I blame all of you. <laughs> it's all your fault. Within days, as of this afternoon, it's probably grown since then. You have more than 16 million followers. Woo! Um, Reese, Reese Harbor has more than 20. So, I know. you know, catch up. So, <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I've been but on it for five years. She's been on it for three days. <laughs> but what did convince you to finally do it? And did you seek some tips from your expert uh, co-star and co-executive producer. Well, I watch her expertly do it and effortlessly. Like, it's never in your face. I know there's people that are kind of constantly doing it and it feels like a little too too much. Um, but of course, I, I asked friends and sort of just felt, listen, this isn't going to go away. And so, you know, why not? Can't beat them, join them. Yeah. And um, I already, I, I really want it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, oh we're God. Good. okay, we love uh, that it. more? It's so good. No, I'm kidding. I think you're I'm very kidding. Good it's at very, it, it's actually quite say. fun, and, and it's fun. <laughs> Reese, really with, is, a guys, little, fun. <laughs> with a little more social media experience under your belt, Reese, has there been any bad social media moments for you? Yes! Oh. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, what do you do about that? You just, well, you realize that everybody has it, and yeah. it's like, it's like white noise, yeah. right? And anything that's there, nobody remembers it the next day. You can't remember it three minutes later. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, and we're, you're gonna mess, I mean, we all mess up. You make mistakes, you say sorry in a genuine way. And yeah. On. Okay, so sorry um. ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, where you, you two have acted before together on Friends as the Green Sisters, <laughs> Rachel and Bill. <laughs> where, we're not, we're not gonna talk about a Friends reunion, but where would the Green Sisters be today? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> we just need television. another chair for yeah. Christina Apple. Yes, we need Christina up here. I don't know where we would be. We love her. We love Christina. Oh, she's so great. She's a good she, one. But she's on another show. I know. Oh, right. Another great show. I'm sure we can. Oh, hello, little animal. I know. There's an animal <laughs> dog there. Um, so what, growing up, what kinds of things did you get in trouble for? Uh, being sassy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> having a smart mouth. Being too opinionated. I got suspended in high school for um, telling the English teacher that I didn't think the homework was hard enough. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what a dork. Well, that just told me. <laughs> that's amazing. I have a friend. <laughs> oh God. You. I was You're like, like, I'm you sorry, this is not hard enough. <laughs> then I got sent to the principal, and she was like, Reese, you can't, even if you think it, you, can't, you just can't say that to, you can't say that to the teacher. I was like, why not? She needs to know. <laughs> My God, you are Bradley Jackson. I know. <laughs> we, we get it so or natural. Or Tracy Flick or something, I don't know. And what about you, Jen? What oh, was your God. I was sent out of the room all the time, but not for saying things weren't hard enough. <laughs> because I would be, I would write little, I would daydream and, and we would pass notes and we'd try to out laugh each other. <laughs> so that, I always got um, somehow, I'd, I'd laugh the hardest and get out of the room and then I'd be psyched to be out of the room. Right. So that's my experience. The fact that I graduated high school was a miracle. Um, <laughs> But uh, and what else did I get in trouble for? Uh, yeah, daydreaming. I was a day daydreaming and not paying. Yeah. You know, well. Okay. So, and speaking of being in trouble, uh -huh. which of your cast members, not just each other, but any of your cast members, which would you want to bail you out if you were in jail for some reason? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who should we send? Mark Duplass. Mark Duplass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mark Duplass. Mark Duplass. Because. Because he's got to get shit done. If he does. <laughs> and he needs a show to go on air at the time, and he needs you out of the. Uh, oh, I thought, I thought we were talking about Mark Duplass for real. Oh. Like if I was in jail, I'd call Mark. <laughs> well, I'd call you first. I was just going to say. I call, well, yes, I'd call you first. But then I'd call Mark. Yeah. I don't know why. It feels like he could spin a story and get you, get you out of jail. See, I think it would be you. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could do that. I, I know people. You do know people. So I know that all the, the breaks of humor in the show, even in these very dramatic scenes, were got a good reaction here tonight. People really responded to that element. 
Certainly, though, you wouldn't, you wouldn't call it a dramedy. It's a drama, but there's a lot of humor. How did you, in development and working through as you were doing the scenes, find that balance of how much the, the comic note was going to be right? I think it just was, it's our, I mean, our, the, my favorite kind of comedy is comedy that comes out of real life, you know? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really about how do we make this a comedic moment. It just was, because some of the things that were happening were hilarious. <laughs> so it was just kind of, you know, playing the truth of, of the moment. I know that you both really wanted to work with Steve Carell on this. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Very solid, grounded. I don't think we could have imagined any other person, because he's so lovable, and he has such good will. So it, you couldn't imagine any other actor playing the part of Mitch Kessler. He's, he's just perfection. Another and so very much more to come. Okay. There's so much more Mitch oh, yeah. in the show, too. So he arcs through the whole season. Yep, right? okay. the whole season, so you get to really see what his life becomes like, which I really like about the show, too. It's not really, it's not really choosing who you like and mm -mm. who you don't, and I think, you know, sometimes life is so bizarre, you have no way to process it, and the show really, I think, helps you know, show what his inner life is like and what happens to his wife and what happens to his kids and his reputation. And, and he does such an incredible job grounding that and making you really care for him as a human being because yeah. he's a human being. Yeah, who really does not understand why, what, what, what happened. Yeah. Right. What did I do? The rules right. changed. Like one day just... he woke up and the rules changed and no one told him. Yeah, and that's the charming narcissist. It's like, well, who doesn't want to... All of everybody wants to be with me, right? I mean, <laughs> where I think those boundaries just don't, you know, yeah. it's a rude, rude awakening. Another very memorable moment from that scene we just talked about outside is when, when, when he says, you know, you say I miss you or whatever. He says me too, and you say, <laughs> you just said it to me. I did. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't use to the. I wouldn't use those two words together if I were you. That's a great line, <laughs> Carrie Aaron. When Carrie you Aaron. when you saw that in the table read or whatever. I mean, like, what was your response to that kind Laugh. of moment? Everybody laughed. Laugh. Huh? Laugh. Everybody laughed in the read through. Everybody yeah. laughed a lot in the a read through. Lot. <laughs> and also, what, for one of the screenings, I was surprised oh, really? more than I anticipated. Did y'all laugh? Did you yeah. find a laugh, Benny? Yeah. 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 I think you got a lot of laughs. On a scale of one to ten. <laughs> How funny was it? <laughs> well, on a scale of one to ten, this was a fantastic night. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. Thank you.